USB power banks. This is particular. This particular one is one that I got from a shop called TK Maxx. Now I tend to buy my solar banks online from places like uh, eBay or, or some of the Chinese suppliers like Banggood. Banggood. But this particular one, um, I, it was a style I hadn't seen. I thought it was quite neat. It was a very small tube, and I wanted to see what size of battery was in it, and I wanted to see how easy it was to open. It turns out they'd glued it shut, but it was openable with just ham-fisted hands. So this is interesting because it's a very tight fit, and such a tight fit that, fit that when I pulled it out, uh, a wire physically popped off the end. And I thought, well, that's a good chance to stick a meter in series with it before I soldered it back on, and check the sort of quiescent current of how much current it draws and sort of standby. And these version are the type that just run all the time. They always put five volts out. There's no button to press to activate it. And they've got the small micro USB charging port and then the main output port that's always got five volts on it. And the circuit only really kicks in every so often, top that five volt up. Or, or um, if you put a load into it, um, it <coughs> then uh, delivers whatever current required to drive the load. So I measured the current in this one, and it came out at 70 microamps. The standby current, that's okay, it's not bad. And then I plugged something into it, and it didn't work. And I thought, oh, is that dead? Because the voltage was, was correct. And I got a USB charger lead, and I plugged it into it. And the little red light lit. And then I unplugged it and suddenly it's working. Right, okay. So that's clearly a little feature that is designed to, I presumed, protect the battery from discharge during operation, uh, during storage when it's on the shelf because it's always connected um, from the point it's manufactured. So I guessed that once it was connected, um, the and you'd started charging it and it activated the circuit, it would probably at that point draw a wee bit more quiescent current. So it started off at 70 microamps. I did a little bit of jiggity-pokery with the test leads, um, shorting them out and so on, so that I could get an indication of the current before and after it had been charged, uh, before and after it had been activated. And strangely, it started off at 70 microamps and then in standby mode without the 5 volts, but once I connected the charger to it and then disconnected it again and it was putting out the 5 volts, the quiescent current dropped to 30 microamps, so it, in its active mode it was drawing less current than it was in standby mode, which is very odd. But um, it's still, 30 microamps is good, but 70 microamps is tolerable and certainly I don't know how long it was since this was manufactured, but the voltage was still still well within the comfortable range of the lithium, so it hadn't been over discharged in storage. Now, oh, just I'll just throw everything. Oh, blame I've dropped everything out. I shall just show you how this goes together because it's just a little bit squirmy. Um, it's got a bezel, an insert, and an end cap, and. The reason the wire came off and the reason all the heat shrink is a bit torn is because this is just an excruciating fit. It is squeaky tight. Um, and that, I'm glad that the negative is the outer shell of the um, lithium battery because the chance of the heat shrink sleeve or the wire being damaged on the outside of it is quite high as it has already been damaged. Uh, during manufacture. So I'm just going to squeeze that in. Oh, that's so squirmy. And the positive is um, protected by that little uh, cardboard disc. And then you're kind of, you have to regard, because the, the insulation has been compromised, you have to regard the outer shell as being at the negative. So you don't want this circuit board to touch it. So it's all a wee bit squirmy-ish. So at this point I shall slip on this cover. 
and then I'll try and push that down a bit further. Oh, that is so tight. Um, and yeah, this circuit board then has to hover without touching against the sides. Oh, this is unpleasant. So that the bezel can be screwed on. Is that going to have to go down much more? Yes, it is. Oh, right, okay. Squeezing down. Yeah, this is squirmy. And the battery is right up to the very end. It's uh, pretty much touching the end cap. So definitely the outer shell could be classed as being uh, connected to the negative, even though it's not functionally connected to the negative. Oh, this is just unpleasant. Oh, it really is unpleasant. I wonder how many of these just blow up in the factory. Ooh. Is that going to go down any further? It's supposed to go down further. Oh, blame me. There we go. Yes, there really is absolutely no spare room in here whatsoever. It's it's squirmy. I'm surprised uh, it hasn't exploded in flames already. There's plenty of time for that to happen. Oh yes. Oh. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. Yeah, that's just a wee bit too tight, I have to say. That is really uncomfortably tight. There's, it's literally millimetre tolerance. But once it's together, yeah, it works. So there you go. Hmm, not so sure about that. It's just too tight for comfort for something that's really just packed with a lithium battery. Uh, yeah, interesting though.